CBS News Miami. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Naja Sherman and welcome to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quickcast. Let's take a look at today's top stories. Off the top, a 4.7 magnitude earthquake shook New York City and the surrounding areas earlier today. Residents from Manhattan to Brooklyn all felt that ground shake. CBS News Miami's Michael George is live in Times Square with reaction. That really had to be something for folks there. Yeah, Naja, it's back to normal here in Times Square, but I can tell you what I and countless New Yorkers felt this morning. It started with some mild shaking. A lot of people thought it was construction, but then it intensified. Plates and dishes rattling, and then it was clear. This is an earthquake. In fact, it was one of the strongest earthquakes ever recorded in this area. A camera on the top of the Statue of Liberty shows the effects of the 4.8 magnitude earthquake that struck the Northeast. These dogs jumped to attention as the shaking rocked homes. And a meeting at the United Nations was briefly interrupted. You're making the ground shake. <laughs> Initially, many thought the shaking was caused by something else. I don't know if this is an earthquake, so I feel like I'm going to sit down. I don't think it is but I think it's just the construction, but it's very weird and scared me. It was a relatively strong earthquake for the Northeast, though it caused minimal damage. Safety crews here in New York City are checking buildings and bridges to make sure they didn't suffer any structural damage. The earthquake that just hit New Jersey is one of the largest that's ever hit the New York City area. Dr. Judith Hubbard is a geologist that specializes in earthquakes. She says the ground in this area causes more widespread shaking compared to a similar quake on the West Coast. The location where the earthquake happened is on a fault that we know about. It's a really super old fault that probably formed about 200 million years ago when North America first split off of Africa. State and local officials are warning residents to be on alert for aftershocks. But we're ready for the unexpected. This is New York City, and we respond accordingly. Experts say there's a small chance of an even larger earthquake in the months ahead. So again, no reports of any serious damage or injuries. More than anything, this shook a lot of people up, both figuratively and literally. We're live in Times Square. Michael George, Naja, back to you. Yeah, I can imagine people in that part of the world not used to earthquakes. Michael, thank you for that live report. And now to the deadly crane accident in downtown Fort Lauderdale. The road now back open less than 24 hours after the incident. The crane came crashing to the ground. You see the images right there. CBS News Miami's Morgan Reiner reports from the scene and she has new reaction and new video. Crews worked through the night to remove the crane off of the downtown Fort Lauderdale Bridge. Jennifer Parent took this video, which shows the same crane that malfunctioned being used to remove the debris. They really did an amazing job protecting the community, and then they went right to work to inspect the bridge. Crews placed a metal sheet over the hole in the bridge so cars can safely pass over it while they work on a permanent solution. It's everyday construction noises, but yesterday the noise I heard was much different. She lives right across from the building under construction and witnessed the aftermath of the partial crane collapse that killed one and sent two others to the hospital. I heard a, like a blood curdling scream and so um, I knew something quite devastating. Mark Karezin was driving over the bridge when it happened, said seconds is all that stood between him and death. I felt above my head, peripherally, something was coming, slammed on the brakes, and that's when it landed and it took off the front of my car. He said it's a miracle he lived to tell the story. That piece of metal bounced in the air and then went to the right and landed on another car. All my airbags went off and I just looked at myself. I couldn't believe that I was still alive. But somehow he managed to find the strength to help others in the chaotic aftermath. This video circulating on social media shows Karezin consoling a woman who was hurt during the ordeal. It's the second in time, you know, we just don't know. So every day we wake up is a gift. And later tonight, the chilling 911 calls from the moment that crane accident happened. CBS News Miami's Yvonne Taylor will have that story coming up tonight at 5. And stay with CBS News Miami as we work to learn more about the deadly crane collapse in Fort Lauderdale. We will bring you team coverage throughout the day, both on air and online. 
Always alerting, always tracking. This is Next Weather. And taking a live look outside, a nice day across South Florida and just in time for the weekend. Next Weather Chief Meteorologist Ivan Cabrera is tracking it all. All right, Naja, good to see you here on a Friday. We have made it clear and comfortable. Absolutely right. 79 degrees right now in the low 80s. The humidity is about as low as it gets, and we have a lot of dry air to be working with here through the weekend. So not going to find much in the way of not even uh, just rainfall. Forget that cloud cover. We have had completely blue skies today with the kind of uh, setup we have. Look at these relative humidity valleys, even at the sour upper 20s. That is his dry stuff for April here. This is radar and clouds. Obviously nothing on radar. We're not but even the cloud cover is hard to come by. Have to go down to Cuba. That's where the front that brought us all this cool and dry air is located. That's going to stay to our south, and there's nothing coming from the north except this, some few thousand feet up, and that is extremely dry air, the driest we have across the lower 48 right now. So that's pretty impressive stuff. Heading into the evening, gorgeous uh, evening to step outside. If you're uh, making, uh, you know, we're going to stay out longer than uh, 10 o'clock, a lot of us do, right? Then we'll slip into the 60s, and I'm thinking upper 50s to low 60s once again, but uh, 282s here wake up to 60 uh, with clear skies. We'll keep it sunny through the weekend. Both Saturday and Sunday will feature full sunshine, maybe Sunday a little more in the form of cumulus clouds, but really the pattern is going to be, you know, just quite fine here. High pressure does migrate east. That'll bring us an easterly wind and that'll pick up a little bit of moisture, but that is only going to come in the form of a mix of sun and clouds coming up for our eclipse on Monday. The path of totality still looks like a lot of cloud cover over Texas. That is a heartbreak there, but a lot of uh, pockets there where you're going to have a complete block of the sun. We are in for a partial eclipse. And for us, I think it still looks good with the mix of sun and clouds. Overnight temperatures tonight, cold stuff, upper 50s, low 60s. We'll keep it that way across the Miami Dade as well. Maybe a few mid 50s, uh, but I think in general, uh, for a couple of hours, we'll be very chilly in the morning. And then by the afternoon, we'll warm things up nicely. Seven day forecast will show again 80s for the weekend. Solar eclipse with good weather, breezy conditions will begin Monday and continue through the end of the week. All right, looking forward to it. Thank you, Ivan. Fire crews are investigating what caused a house to go up in flames overnight in Parkland. Take a look at these pictures. They were sent by Coral Springs Fire Rescue. It shows flames ripping through the second floor of this home. Officials say luckily no one was inside at the time. Portions of the house were collapsing as they arrived. The house was under, under renovation and they were, they've been here since 3 a.m. trying to extinguish the fire. Fire officials say the house appears to be a total loss. Now to the Israel-Hamas war. Israel's military has released the findings of its preliminary investigation. It's into the airstrikes that killed seven workers that are, were aid workers in Gaza. CBS News Miami's Natalie Brand has the report from Washington, D.C. Israel's preliminary investigation found that members of its armed forces thought they were hitting Hamas targets and that Monday's deadly attack was due to mistaken identification, errors in decision making and a violation of standard operating procedures. Israel's defense forces have fired two officers as a result of the investigation. All I can say at the moment is, uh, is to uh, offer my apologies and uh, say that we share in the grief. The probe acknowledged the strikes hit all three vehicles in the convoy, killing seven World Central Kitchen aid workers. In a statement, the food charity demanded an independent commission investigate the incident. They were targeted systematically, car by car. Under growing pressure, Israel approved opening three humanitarian corridors overnight, including the Eras Gate in northern Gaza, which has been closed since the war began. These are positive developments, but the real test is results, and that's what we're looking to see in the coming days and in the coming weeks. The move follows a tense phone call Thursday between President Biden and Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. The White House says Biden made clear U.S. policy with respect to Gaza hinges on Israel's immediate action to better protect civilians, and he called for an immediate ceasefire. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. CBS News has confirmed CIA Director Bill Burns is expected to travel to Cairo to resume negotiations. It's to try and free hostages held by Hamas. And now to the key bridge collapse. President Joe Biden is in Baltimore today. President there to view the wreckage firsthand and meet with the families of the six construction workers who died in that collapse. U.S. Army Corps of Engineers says they hope to have it open by next month.
Millions of Americans are prepping to experience the eclipse across the country. What scientists will be looking into during this very special event. Stay with us. Welcome back to CBS News Miami's 4 p.m. Quickcast. We are now just three days away from the total eclipse. Millions of eyes will be looking up Monday, and it's not just a fun event, but a rare chance for scientists to try and better understand how sun activity can have major impacts on our Earth. As millions watch the moon block out the sun, scientists across the globe will be keeping a close watch too. This eclipse allowing researchers to study the outer edges of the sun in a way they normally can't. If you talk to the science community about this, they call the moon the perfect coronagraph because it blocks out most of the sun in just a way that allows us to look at the corona. That's the outer atmosphere of the sun, a place scientists still have many questions about. It's where solar winds and storms come from, which when aimed at Earth can affect our upper atmosphere. Sometimes in great ways like the northern lights and sometimes in not so great ways like disrupting communications. NASA will be using sounding rockets with high altitude planes to try and better understand the solar activity. In the past, GPS, electrical grids, satellites and more have been impacted by solar storms. The sun's activity is ramping up. Peter Becker, a George Mason University professor, is working with the Navy and Department of Defense to better understand solar activity's impact on systems on Earth, including the Internet. He says a lot of infrastructure needs to be improved to prevent what he calls an Internet apocalypse. If you take the internet down, even for a day, I think the estimates are like about $10 billion of economic damage per day in the U.S. alone. And here at home, CBS News Miami's Trish Christakis will share the different spots. You can enjoy the solar eclipse right here in South Florida. And Monday, join us for our special South Florida Solar Eclipse 2024. We'll bring you the watch party starting at 2.45 p.m. Streaming on CBS News Miami, Pluto TV, and the CBS Miami app. That's the CBS News Miami Quickcast. I'm Naja Sherman. Stay tuned for more news right here on CBS News Miami and have a great Friday.